this today's project it's a three tier seedling shelf for putting my seeds on to get them growing a bit better uh, I've done this one and I've done a two tier one over here for larger plants this only took me a day to do both of these and I'll show you how I built them right now okay right now for this shelving unit for my greenhouse to put my seeds on I've started with some of this wood here which is uh, pressure treated uh, and I bought this uh, job lot uh, for oh, I can't remember how much now, I think about 10-15 pounds I got 30 planks uh, at 1.6 meters because where I bought it from they cut this they cut a whole load of this up and when the customer came back to pick it up they'd cut it at the wrong size simple <laughs> so they had to recut it in for his order but they had to sell this off so but they sold it off very cheaply and uh, it's a good way of getting cheap wood as well you know especially if they well, you guys made a mistake you get it quite a bit cheaper um waffling on there but sorry on with this piece now i use this piece with a wane on it it's a rubbish piece so, uh, I've used this as a template now cutting these holes in here I've used a hole cutter one problem with the hole cutters and I've, I'm sure you all know about this who's ever got these type of hole cutters you get these plugs stuck in here now they give you a couple of holes to put a punch through to punch it out but it's very hard because the drill gets stuck in here and onto the outside edge I'm going to show you an easy way of doing this now using a pillar drill you could you could use a normal drill as well but uh, I'll use a pillar drill I've got it set at 1400 rpm any slower and the teeth get clogged with wood especially um, treated wood because it, it, it does clog it up quite a bit 1400 I find is ideal it keeps it quite clean and uh, goes for the wood pe fairly fast so first thing is I'll make this jig for the pillar drill so I can put all the pieces in and drill out the centers as I need them right here we go it's quite quiet this so my arm's not in the way, so here we go. Let's just drill the hole through here. I'm coming. Slow and easy. Don't force it. Let the, the bit do the work. Right, I've gone through there now. Not very, not very deep, but it's about a half inch in. Well, maybe not even that. Give it that clean off. And then coming from the other side. As you can see here. Now what we've done, we've scored it on either side. So we'll turn that off. Next thing is I get a spade bit or a bigger drill, it doesn't really matter, doesn't have to be a spade bit. I drill that hole out in the centre. Come through from each side and we enlarge that hole. Now as we've cut the circle in here, this piece of cutter here will automatically go into there. So we don't need the centre hole anymore. And now we can finish the cut. Halfway through. there's a plug in there we can now easily pull that out a couple of fingers it comes out very easily because the drill is not sticking 
is not jamming this to the side of the bell. And that's one way to get them out quite easily. Well, I won't bore you with the rest of it. I'll carry on. I've got another three of these to do. So I'll be back in a minute. Right, now. Next operation we need this back again. Uh, but after opening up the chuck and letting the thing fall out. Do not touch that, especially after doing a lot of work. This is red hot and it will burn your fingers, so don't do it. Uh, I'm just gonna, it's cool enough for me just to touch the top of that, but it's still very hot. So be careful when you're taking those out. Oh, I just thought I'd show you the actual pillar drill I've got here. This one is the Pro Red Eye Drill Press. Uh, thing about it, it, it does have a laser in here for pointing. I thought it was a good idea at the time, but I only paid £35 for this from uh, b and I think it was, or Home Base, one of the two, anyway. Um, trouble with the laser I found, you alter your bed on your drill, alters the laser sighting on it. Um, it's not that brilliant because it's back here and it points down and makes a cross on the centre. Unfortunately, move this up and down and the centre moves backwards and forwards. Not very good. Anyway, uh, we'll get on and drill this, I'll show you. I'll do one and then I'll, sh I'll do the rest off camera. It doesn't really matter about this, uh, as long as it's roughly in the centre and it goes through the bottom of the hole as well. Now, what I did was I drilled a clearance hole this side and a clearance hole this side, so I wasn't clamping up the same side each time. Um, I think that'll be better with it. I'll get on and do the rest legs in here when we put the plastic legs in here we can uh, put the drill again just through the plastic just to uh, make it easier to put the screw in right i'm just going to take this to my circular saw and put a slot in it and what i did is i put a saw cut down here I tried to screw in it didn't want to know there's just too much pressure to pull this tight together. So what I did, I split them in half. Much easier that way to do. And now, when I put the screw in here, it will clamp really tight on that uh, plastic pipe. And it doesn't move now. And I'll still go through each pipe with the screw. And I might just put an extra one an extra screw just in the center to hold the two together as well so that's that on to the next bit which is start to put all this together right once you've done it turn put the screws in uh, through the plastic make sure you make the clearance holes in the plastic as well because if you don't what will happen is when you put the screw through it will pull the plastic in and kink it which you don't want to do as it is that's the strongest joint you will ever get on these and you won't need anything more on that uh, I was going to put a screw in the center as well I don't need it I really really don't need it so I've got to do the rest down here I'm having uh, 15 inches between shelves because they're only seed trays they're not going to be full plants these are for my allotment um, I can put all my seeds on here, get them up, then take them down the allotment and plant them out. That is the next job. I managed to get the planks cut down. I took two planks, split them in half, got 35 and a half inches in length um, because they were only 1.6 meters long, so I was an inch short of uh, six foot. But that doesn't matter, it, it still fits the gap that I've got left there. Um, 
I had a 36 inch gap and this will fit in there fine. I haven't lost much at all. What I've done is I've taken the two planks that were on the out, outside edge of the plank in itself. I've picked up, I've got six of those. I've put a screw hole in each end and I've fixed the frame together. Now I'm going to go and show you that. Here we are. This is what I've done. I've done the ends now, as you can see, and I've put these wood pieces with the good edge to the outside on all three shelving pieces. So that's made my shelf bracket up so far. What I've got to find out now is what sort of gap I'm going to have to have between these. Uh, I'm just going to pop in and get a couple more of this beading. Right, if I just use four on here, which will give me quite a wide gap, uh, and then try my uh, planter, where have I put that? I'll pop one of my seed trays on there. Um, have a look at it. No, that's not going to work. Let's try five. So I'm going to put one down the middle. And we'll split the gap up again. There. Try that. Better, much better. Um, still don't like that edge piece there, so... Um, so, they've got to go there. That one's got to go there. And I'll we'll split this up. with six slats on here. I'll leave that the same gap there. Oh, that's better. That, that's, that fits nicely. Uh, most of the cells have actually got a little bit of their cell on at least one of the bearers. So that's fine. So I think I'll leave it like that. Six buttons per shell. Right, just mark the screw hole so that I know I won't put it in a place where it's going to split the wood. Just go and drill these and then I'll screw these on. Right, I'll place these on here, roughly equal gaps. Uh, they don't have they don't have to be absolutely equal. Near enough is good. Yes. Right, that's the last screw in the top one. Uh, okay, right now. I've done the top shelf, I've screwed all the buttons down, uh, roughly put them, roughly equal gaps, it don't have to be that exact, not on this anyway. Um, I've still got to do the bottom and the little shelf, and I'll do that off camera, and I'll show you the finished item in place when I've done that. So I'll be back in a second. Right, there she is, the three shelves on her. The seedlings on top are going to be repotted. Uh, I've got to pop me tomato on there as well. I've just popped them up there to get them off the floor. Also, also my other rack here, which is two shelves for the taller plants. Um, these are waiting to go back out the front when I uh, get the final bits and pieces done there. Uh, just some tie rods I've got to buy. Then I can fill that back up and put these back in the front garden. Okay, right, nice simple shelving for a greenhouse, or anywhere basically, uh, you could use these outside be, because you, you if you're using uh, pressure treated timber, they can go out on the patio, they look quite nice, they, you know, I mean, you could paint them up uh, with some uh, sh uh, fence and uh, shed stain, uh, you can do them, they've got blue, they've got gold, they've got uh, green, brown, any colour you like really, 
they do lots of the colours now. Uh, so you can paint them up, put them out on your patio, have your flower pots on there, or even your veg vegetable plots on there as well. You can make them to the size of uh, plastic uh, uh, tubs that you can, instead of putting lots of slats across it, if you do a slat on either 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 side, or back and front I should say, and make the slot in the centre the same size as the pot, you can slide the pots in there, the, the, the oblong ones we're talking about now, you can slide those in there, fill them up with dirt and you've got yourself a little planter there, nice and easy. Uh, they'll last a long time, uh, so, and they won't go all horrible like the plastic pots do in the sun on that. Uh, just treat them every year with a, a new coat of uh, shed and fence uh, stain and they'll last you a good long time, a very long time. Well, until you build, decide to build new ones or make a whole display of it, you know, because you don't actually have to just do three tiers. You could do um, three tiers one side, another three tiers the other side, and in the centre you could have a six tier, you know, and uh, make it sort of stepped like that, like a pyramid or ziggurat, and uh, have a nice display in there. Uh, all like lovely little plants in there. You don't have to run them as wide as I did either. You can narrow them because I've only gotten this wide for my seed trays. So, on that note, I'm going to say, see you all soon. It's buy from company. Buy from me. See you soon. Thanks for watching. That's it for this part. I'll see you soon. Keep safe. Bye for now.